What's up, universe? Elliot from Starforge Systems here. Next to me is one of our Voyager 2 PCs, and I want to talk to you about what's in the system, why it's in there, and what you can expect from its performance. Let's get right into it. The Voyager 2 PC is designed as part of a generational refresh to our original Voyager series. Based around the newest Intel release, the Core i7-14700K boasts additional cores, threads, and cache while still maintaining a manageable power draw and improving upon last gen's internal memory controller. We're thrilled to complement this processor with the Deepcool LS720 as its pump and cold plate manage thermals comfortably. The 360mm radiator complemented with a suite of 6 FC120 fans and a chimney configuration brings cool air from the bottom of the case and pushes warm air out through the top. The Li and Li O11 Dynamic Evo continues to be a visually appealing case that allows all of our aesthetic improvements to be even easier to show off. We use Cable Mod's sleeved cable extensions for a sleek, finished look and a tidy rear chamber. These cable extensions serve to carry power from our MSI-supplied A850G gold-rated power supply. We chose this particular power supply for its ability to support end-to-end 12-volt -end high power connections to the graphics card and its great efficiency. Our newest improvement, the Starforge Plate Light, comes with an easily swapped panel and multiple inserts. With plans to make future inserts available, this modal aesthetic component sets Starforge System's Voyager line apart from other high-end systems. As always, our RGB RAM from Team Group runs in a dual-channel configuration, while this kit operates at 6,000 megatransfers per second. 32GB of memory is more than enough for most gamers and should provide a meaningful upgrade for those taking their content creation to the next level. We've stuck with the MSI Z790 Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard to ensure good power delivery to our processor, solid I.O., and tons of room for storage. Speaking of storage, our Voyager 2 line comes with double the original drive capacity of its predecessor, with a 2TB KC3000 from Kingston and a 2TB Z44A5 from Team Group, both are PCIe Gen 4x4 ready and offer a total of 4TB of storage for games, files, and whatever other projects you may be working on. Lastly, we've stuck with the RTX 4070 Ti from NVIDIA. DLSS has proven to be a phenomenal tool and its evolution to DLSS 3.5 promises to be an even better experience for gamers. Now for some game tests. Check out the description below for our testing methodology and remember that all tests are run on standardized systems so you know exactly what to expect. Beginning with Forza Horizon 5, while the GPU rendered 176 FPS average, finally delivered frames came in at 161 FPS average, playing at 1080p. Remember that there's a pass off between GPU and CPU renders that results in this disparity. Enabling DLSS stresses the GPU in different ways, but frame generation allows for 156 rendered frames per second to rise up to 234 FPS average, making its way to the monitor. At 1440p, the GPU is responsible for a relatively larger workload. We see actual FPS at 142, while the GPU renders 153 frames per second average. And at 4K, the GPU starts to become a little bit more of a limiting factor. 111 frames per second average rendered compared to 104 frames that will actually make it to the monitor. Moving to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the game runs at a blistering 156 FPS average at 1080p. Keeping the same ultra-high preset options, 1440p results in 125 frames per second average. At 
and at 4K there's very few dips below 60 FPS. But averages here are still well above that. 77 frames per second average from the Voyager 2. Shifting to Far Cry 6, 1080p gameplay ran at 147 FPS average throughout our testing passes. Cranking the resolution to 1440p doesn't impact performance very much at all, moving to 139 FPS average. And in 4K, we see lows above 60 FPS with a fairly strong average of 86 FPS average. Modern Warfare 2 performance at 1080p is nothing to scoff at. 174 FPS average with extreme settings along with relatively high lows. 5% lows sat at 126 FPS and 1% 1 lows at 105 FPS. At 1440p, the in-game benchmark ran at 127 FPS, with 5% lows at 90 FPS and 1% lows at 72 FPS. And at 4K, the game still runs relatively smoothly, 78 FPS average at native resolution with 5% lows at 52 FPS and 1% lows at 38 FPS. There's a lot to be gained by enabling DLSS here. 4K performance shot up to 135 FPS average. 5% lows more than doubled to 108 FPS, and 1% lows improved all the way to 90 FPS. Thank you. 
Rounding out our suite is Rainbow Six Siege. You may notice slightly different benchmark results here as we've stopped running the tests on Vulcan. At 1080p, the game still finishes a resounding 499 FPS average. Moving up to 1440p, Rainbow Six played at 428 FPS average. Remember that we're using Ultra Settings and the HD Texture Packs enabled. Lastly, at 4K, we saw 254 FPS average. There isn't a 4K monitor on the market that this won't fully saturate, so it's safe to say that this game will run incredibly smoothly. That's a wrap on the Voyager 2. With generational improvements, aesthetic updates, and our consistently high build quality, we're sure that this PC is something to brag about. For yours, check out StarForgeSystems.com and be sure to swing by our Twitch channel over at twitch.tv slash StarForgeSystems. Like, comment, and subscribe for more PC content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the Forge.